Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Tuesday, March 1st, 2011, and I'm Darko. Uh, welcome back, everyone, to this uh, Global Government News News Bulletin. This is part three, and um, please visit my website, www.ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. All right, we, um, we finished up with this article uh, in the last video. Alaska lawmaker returns home after refusing search. Uh, says determined to avoid a pat-down search to board her flight home, an Alaska state lawmaker took an unusual route, a roundabout four-day detour via rental car, a small plane, taxi cab, and a ferry. Uh, Representative, uh, what is this, uh, Cisna's land, air, and sea journey ended Thursday uh, when her ferry arrived in Auk Bay outside Juneau, where she had been met by a small group of well-wishers and bouquet of yellow flowers. Said uh, She said travelers are, quote, accidentally being abused by government. Uh, accidentally? No, I don't think it's accidentally. But uh, either way, I commend her for what she's doing. And she vowed to fight for changes in how the TSA deals with screening passengers. Well, you have the power. Why don't you just get rid of them? And especially those with special health issues like people in wheelchairs that are being uh, treated like crap. Business bans uh, TSA agents will more follow and um, says here uh, McLaughlin works for, uh, or KC McLaughlin works for a cafe near Seattle Tacoma International Airport. And since the body scan and pat down controversy last November, she says her boss has taken extraordinary measures to ensure the TSA knows of his displeasure. Quote, we have posted signs in our doors basically saying that they aren't allowed to come in our business. She says we have the right to refuse service to anyone. And he or she does, uh, anyone does, you know, uh, you know, you don't have to serve anybody. And if you don't like them for whatever reason, whether it's, you know, race, uh, uh, or eth ethnicity or religion. And although there is a law to force employers, uh, to hire everyone and not discriminate, um, you're not, uh, businesses aren't forced to serve everybody. So, um, you know, I, my my feeling is, as far as the uh, Civil Rights uh, Act and that, as far as hiring people with disabilities is, well, let's see, you can't hire someone who's either physically or mentally incompetent to do a job that requires physical or mental competence. So, you know, you can't just force things like that. Um, you have to have some common sense. There's plenty of things that people that uh, lack those abilities can do. Um, there's jobs out there for them, and there's good. There's a lot more um, agencies and organizations, private and public, uh, publicly funded, that are um, basically there to help those individuals. But anyways, I don't want to go off too much on this. Just basically, they're voting uh, with their dollars, and that's the best way to do it. Instead of going to the government to ask to legislate something and create more laws, um, you can just basically with your dollars you can vote. And um, you'll get your voice heard that way a lot more than by voting, right? Voting, uh, going to the polls and voting for representatives who don't represent you. Bill would make some airport screening sexual assault, so there you go. And like I said, you don't have to do this, but they're going to do it anyways, right? Those convicted would be required to register as sex offenders, lawmakers, and residents engage in a heated debate to, uh, Tuesday over a bill that would make random airport security pat-downs and body scans criminal in New Hampshire. So the bill, HB 628FN, quote, makes the touching or viewing with the technological device of a person's breast or genitals by a government security agent without probable cause a sexual assault, according to the in introductory text of the bill. So they always have to throw that in there with probable cause. And of course, these people, you know, it could be anything, right? Uh, they're pulling people off now when they get off the uh, train stations now, and they're actually searching them, forcing them, strip searching children in that as they get off the pl after get off the train, and they have no choice. They're being forced to. Usually you do it before you get on the train, and they're doing it when they get off the train. After touching your junk, TSA now wants you to scan and harvest your DNA. It says here, as if it's not enough for the TSA to fill you up at the airport, now they're experimenting with rapid results. DNA scanners that can scan and analyze your DNA using just a drop of sal saliva. And it says uh, spit at the TSA agent who is molesting you, in other words. And they can use that saliva to scan your DNA and then store it in a government database. And it says, why would they want to do that? And it says, remember, it was Alex Jones who broke the story about hospitals secretly taking blood samples of babies and handing them over to the federal government for use in a national ge uh, genetic database, which is true. That is true. I covered that, too. So... 
um, you know, it's just basically they want to uh, uh, tack, you know, basically inventory us, tack us and inventory us and track us uh, because we are assets. That's what we are. We're taxpayers and we're like cattle, right? So, I mean, I'm sorry, but that's it may be a morbid uh, uh, way of looking at things, but that's just the reality of it. Um, I don't, you know, this is how our the, our masters, the powers that be, that's how they view us. So, and this is a big farm, a big business, and we are assets on that farm. New portable DNA screener to debut this summer. So just like cows, when they put little RFID trackers, you know, like us, like people, um, they have to have some kind of trackers or tractor or cattle. The Homeland Security Department this summer plans to begin testing a DNA, DNA analyzer that's small enough to be easily portable and fast enough to return results in less than an hour. So all the links will be posted. It says, first ever, Austinites outbid police and gun buyback counter program. And I thought this was kind of a good story. And it says here in Austin, Texas, activists were successful in buying trunks full of uh, usable firearms that would have otherwise been destroyed or ended up in the hands of, quote, terrorists, right? As we have seen before, how cops confiscate guns and resell them to the drug cartels. About 40 gun buyers, both independent and otherwise, stood in front of the Austin Police gun buyback event, offering cash for the guns they were about to turn into the city for food cards. As people rolled up, we approached them for our offers and paid them hard cash after inspecting the guns to make sure that they were operable. I ended up with a 9mm for a fraction of what it would cost at the gun shop. So that's uh, good news. And look at this. Uh, Dolby Grazier uh, Gary Biggs steps up fight after being fined during floods. And you could say, oh, what was he doing? Was he rioting? Was he looting? Was he stealing? Was he damaging property? No! He was helping. He was voluntarily helping his fellow humans, his fellow Australians. And he got a $600 infringement notice in the mail last week. And it said, uh, in a rage, Gary Briggs has again taken to the Internet to fight the charge and urge others to do the same. And um, it says here, adult, uh, he said his charge over a petty offense during the January floods. Uh, will today step up his grassroots campaign against the bureaucratic insanity. He said a similar email from Mr. Biggs last, last month was forwarded to hundreds of Queenslanders and landed in the inboxes of senior politicians. Quote, uh, it's not that I got fined. It's just about the fact that we're not allowed to go and help each other. Mr. Briggs, who also owns Dingo Mini Digger, said, quote, there's no common sense. And uh, he hopes that people power will force authorities to, quote, cut some slack for locals lending a hand. That's right. They were out there issuing tickets while there was floods and cyclones, right? And the government couldn't keep up with it. And God forbid the slaves go out there and help you, another slave, right? So, because they want you to rely on the state completely. It says, uh, And it's all about collectivism, but not in the sense that it's actually people voluntarily. They ha you have to be coerced. That's the thing. You have to be coerced or forced or threatened with violence. And that's the only way. That's the only legal way. Otherwise, if you do it voluntarily without coercion, well, then that's illegal, right? You know, that's anarchy. That's chaos, right? <laughs> J.P. Morgan raises $1 billion to invest in social media companies. J.P. Morgan has raised more than $1 billion for a fund to invest in the social media companies as it becomes the latest Wall Street bank seeking to tap a wave of interest from investors. Well, yeah. Why? Because they're, gonna, they're designed for intelligence agencies to track uh, people's activity, right? And build databases on them, personality profiles, psychological profiles. Prepare to give up all private data for any gold purchase over $100. And it's a move by the Dutch bank that was reported um, by Zero Hedge. So you can check out the link. And uh, we have this. And uh, don't forget, back in World War II, um, I'm sure many of you already know, but if you fell asleep during history class or you're just living under a rock, back in World War II, uh, under the Roosevelt administration, gold was confiscated. So, and, uh, you know, don't be surprised if that happens again. Uh, you know, that's the first move. And then uh, they all about just ban it and then ban purchases and then they confiscate it. And then, uh, of course, it's off to the debtors' prisons and FEMA camps. Big Law's $1,000 plus an hour club says leading attorneys in the U.S. are asking as much as $1,250 an hour, significantly more than the previous years, take advantage of big clients' willingness to pay top dollar for certain types of services. So you can check that out. 
This lawyer's making a killing, I guess. Experian adds rent payments to credit reports. So look at that. The Experian Consumer Credit Reporting Firm has added rent payments, uh, rent payment histories to its reports. So just like Progressive, who got sued over looking at uh, credit scores uh, to gauge your uh, premiums, right? And then they got caught and they got sued. It says here, deaths on commercial aircraft worldwide rose 15% last year. Uh, while the overall accident rate involving Western jets fell to an all-time low. The headline was commercial aircraft deaths worldwide up 15%. So that's good old technology, right? It shouldn't be happening. Bed bug airways. BA, or British Airways, grounds two jumbo jets after a woman tells how flights left her covered in bites. The crazy part is that the airlines snubbed her until... Uh, until she started to really uh, go public with it. And I just wanted to say she didn't want any compensation. She just wanted the problem to be fixed. And there's the pictures. Uh, scientists building largest antimatter trap ever. Uh, D.C. creating matter's strange cousin. Antimatter is tricky, but holding onto it is even trickier. Now scientists are working on a new device that may be able to trap antimatter, antimatter sorry, long enough to study it. And uh, link will be posted. Earliest human remains in U.S. Arctic reported. It says here some 11,500 years ago, one of America's earliest families laid the remains of a three-year-old child to rest in her home in what is now Alaska. The discovery of that burial is shedding new light on the life and times of early settlers who crossed from Asia to the New World. Researchers reported in Friday's edition of the journal, the bones represent the earliest human remains discovered in the Arctic of North America. Quote, a pretty significant find is Ben Potter at University of Alaska Fairbanks. Then we have this. Hawking predicts time travel. Says humans one day could be able to use time travel to skip generations into nature, according to physicist Stephen Hawking. And then there's an uh, individual, Stuart Swerdlow from Expansions.com, who uh, who has his own theories that the sun is actually used for time travel and that when you see those objects coming out of the sun, those are actually craft and they're using the sun as a way to harness um, uh, some kind of a gate, a stargate or something like that. Um, so you'll see him uh, zapping out of there in that. Um, I'm not sure if that's true. I'm just pointing it out as a possibility. Ordinary compasses thrown off by changes in Earth's magnetic field. This is big news. The Earth's magnetic field is changing at an increasing rate, throwing off airports and altering the aurora borealis. And its effect on ordinary compasses could mean differences between homeward bound and hopelessly lost. Talking about you could actually be... Um, uh, if you're off just one degree, a couple degrees, you can be, you know, 60 to 100, uh, 100 miles off, depending on how far you're going. So 67% uh, of U.S. says steer clear of political unrest in Arab nations, so they don't want us to go into Libya, the people. America, Chavez says he won't condemn Libya's Gaddafi. Then Chavez, U.S. distorting situation in Libya to justify an evasion. And um, he basically says that uh, the distorting... Uh, things to justify an evasion in order to go in there and get their oil. Press TV, U.S. NATO bases prepare Libya attack. And then we have this, U.S. positions military units near Libya, freezes Gaddafi family's assets. Then we have OIC against military intervention in Libya, that's Organization of Islamic Conferences. And then U.S., France, Britain set up bases in Libya, and they've dispatched hundreds of military advisors to Libya to set up military bases in the country's oil-rich east. And those were, all those people, Mubarak and, and King Abdullah and Gaddafi, these were all people that were, were funded and backed by the West. So just know that, and they're basically they're done with them. The oil's running dry, and they're done with them now. And now the power, now basically this world government governing body uh, wants to go in there and uh, uh, physically get in there and take those puppets that they had in there for a while out, and they'll put in their pro democracy puppets. U.S. urges support, which is going to be even worse for those people. But I don't think they know that. Yemeni president sacks five gover governors. Egypt seizes Mubarak family funds, and he don't look too happy about that. China tightens media controls amid the uh, protests for Jasmine Revolution, and uh, probably uh, intelligence operated. SEC charges Goldman with insider trading. Idaho State House takes up plan to lay off teachers and cut collective bargaining. State Senate committee votes to scrap Arizona's Medicaid program. Obama endorses plan to let states opt out of the U.S. health care overhaul law. U.S. in for 20 years of rising interest rates, uh, Loomis says.
First deep water drilling permit issued for Gulf since BP oil spill at current rate of federal borrowing government on track to hit legal limit on national debt on March 14th. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.